is a good friend of mine, Oren Solomon, not to be confused with Bert's Bees, but he's the owner of a co-working space called Dallas Fort Work, and he really is one of the smartest people I know, and he's going to talk about the importance of bees and, and, how, and what role they play in our ecosystem. So, this thing on. So tonight, uh, my talk is on honeybees, and if all you want out of this is free honey, I've got two free events where you can come and taste my honey. Um, tomorrow, 8 a.m. to noon, uh, the co-working jelly bean at Surge Books, and uh, next Wednesday at Dallas Fort Work, uh, Waffle Wednesday. Um, so this is a propaganda speech. Uh, by the end of this talk, I'm going to convince you that the extinction of bees means the wrecking of our entire economy. So if you're with me, everybody together, all together, one time, save the bees. Save the bees. So what I'm proposing here is a modest shift in the way that we value bees, away from their economic value in dollars and cents, and towards their culinary and nutritional value measured in noms and bites. You know, like, um, nom, 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 nom. So basically, they do a lot for the economy. They contribute $15 billion a year to our GDP. But in the marketplace, it looks different. On the left, we have uh, our food supply if bees continue, or if bees become extinct. And on the right, we have if the bees uh, survive. So here, um, thinking about this, uh, basically it's economy of abundance versus economy of scarcity. Uh, on Earth, air is abundant. It is all over the place, air is free. That's an economy of abundance. On Mars, you have to bring your own air supply. And if you don't, you die, economy of scarcity. So when we talk about bees and their populations, we measure them in the units of hives. Uh, bees are basically loyal to their hive, and they only survive as a unit. There's no such thing as a solitary honeybee. And there's three types of bees. We have two female types. We have the workers and the queen, and one male type, which is the drone. Basically, the queens and the drone get together and reproduce. That's all they do. And then the worker bees, aptly named, do all of the work. So imagine if you went to college, majored in everything, graduated with a 4.0, but really, you were born with all this wisdom out the gate. You have the physique of Michael Phelps, the selflessness of the Dalai Lama, the devotion of a kamikaze pilot, you are now a worker bee. Welcome to the hive. So these worker bees, the hardest working animals in the entire animal kingdom, uh, never reproduce. They don't have sex. They just work all day long. And so this is why beekeepers like to call them the virgin sisters of toil. They just work. They have no distractions. So the question on everybody's mind tonight is why are the bees dying? And basically, in an agricultural setting, Bees alternate between being furiously overworked and sitting idly waiting for their next job, all the while being exposed to pesticides, <coughs> poison, um, having their honey stolen from them and replaced by sugar water. So imagine if your commute to work was in a dark shipping container for days, then you got to your toxic work environment where you worked for weeks on end, where you subsisted on a diet of Diet Coke and Twinkies, and then people ask why the bees are dying. Um, so here we have uh, Florida beekeepers. Uh, they own about 90% of the bees in the country, doing what they do best, loading and unloading their bees at someone else's farm, pollinating their crops for about two weeks. And this is due to a phenomenon known as monocropping, where the idea is you specialize in one crop, you do not diversify your crops. And so this creates a situation where the bees can only live there for two weeks before they run out of food. They would starve otherwise. So this right here is kind of the uh, tour dates of the nationwide tour that bees go on because of this crazy fucked up system. So they start down here in Florida, then they go up to where you see sunflowers and cucumbers, then all the way down across the country to California for avocados and almonds. And really, none of this is natural, not whatsoever. This is not the ways that bees have survived for millions of years on their own, or the ways that humans have kept bees for thousands of years. When we talk about bees, you know, normally their hives are stationary. They're not exposed to pesticides. Um, they go around and pollinate all sorts of different uh, uh, pollination events, all sorts of different crops and flowers all throughout the year. Uh, and they have a stable food source, and they get to keep their own honey. It's not stolen from them. Um, so basically what we're talking about here is the way to save bees is to provide good, stable habitats for bees, the places where a bee can just be. And so let me break down the economics for you. We're taking the hardest workers in the entire animal kingdom, and if they die, we replace them with humans or machines. And these are subject to uh, worker stoppages or just strikes or shortages of all kinds. Uh, and so we're gonna go from having, we're gonna go to having a, a situation where we have a dollar almond or a hundred dollar avocado. 
And all we need to do to avoid this fate is to shift the way we think about bees and thinking about them instead of what they contribute to the bottom line and what they contribute to our waistline. And if you need any help visualizing what that looks like, we've got two events for you. Tomorrow, 8 a.m. to noon at Surge Books, the co-working jelly bean, and next Wednesday at Fort Work, Waffle Wednesday. Save the bees. <laughs>